Anchors up, sells it full. Welcome to the Sloopcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing pretty well here, Jared. How are you doing today? I'm doing all right. Uh, hold on, hold on. That was a good one. That was a good one. I think that one's going to come through on the recording. All right, I'll trust you with that one. <laughs> I, I'm almost sure. I am almost sure. Uh, Gangland said he got it in the in in the Discord, so right, I good. feel like that's a good sign. Good, good. I want hold on. I want to drop this in here real quick. I like dropping the thumbnail in the chat as we get going. I actually meant to do it before we got started, but here we are. Now, now, what while, are we while, talking about today? There. Um, well, today we're gonna we're gonna talk about the 2025 muck class muck part two here. Uh, we did one about a a little more than a month ago, so I thought um, with with the news that's come by, and I thought it'd be a good refresher here. Uh, but before we jump into it, just some just some Buckeye news here to to start off the um, before we get. Kyle, if you start the Buckeye, if you start to the, show uh, off with with basketball news, everyone's gonna leave. Guys, if he talks about basketball news, I swear to you, no. it'll only be for a second. We're going to football. Please don't turn off the podcast. No, James Laurinaid is staying. Staying with Ohio right. State here. All right. It, it felt there was there was a there was a there was a, a lot of talk. Down. There was a lot of talk about him. Maybe him going somewhere and maybe going to Cleveland, going going somewhere else. But good good to see him back back in Columbus and going to be there to um yeah be here with the with the with the Buckeyes here. Yeah, what felt like a foregone conclusion, all of a sudden felt super touching. Go there for a second, and not just because of Cleveland, just. Just cause it just kind of felt like maybe like it was a nothing. thing that wasn't going to happen. And and then it, and mm -hmm. then it happened. Maybe, maybe some outside of, maybe just some pressure needed applied. Yep. Oh, speaking of pressure, speaking of pressure, not now, Jared, this is, this is when uh, we talk about uh, basketball here. <laughs> uh, yeah. Finally, <laughs> finally, finally the, um, <laughs> Finally, the uh, the team decides to go ahead and move move on uh, from Holtman here, firing him, and then uh, Diebler, Jake Diebler, is the interim head coach. And we just saw uh, this this afternoon, as uh, right before we hit the record here, that the Buckeyes taking down number two Purdue. Yeah, um, this is a this is a thing that happens. I'll say before people want to get all crazy and start removing interim tags. This is a thing that happens after a coach is fired. Sometimes where you see the team rally and play some great basketball and, you know, with a new coach, sometimes a lot of your old tendencies are mm -hmm. gone. So you kind of go out there with a the fresh classic pre big team, big 10 tournament antics plus Jared's point. Yeah. Um, not to mention, it was at home, which for this Ohio State team, at least under Holtman, maybe it's different now, but at least under Holtman, there is a big difference between Ohio State basketball at home and Ohio State basketball on the road. And Kyle, for God's sakes, let's stop talking about basketball. Guys, we're, people are going to start turning the show off. You want to talk about hockey? You want to talk about hockey, Jared? Which hockey? <laughs> Uh, which which piece the, of Buckeye news the, um, or uh, Columbus based hockey news? Well, it's it's more it's more Columbus it's more Columbus based news. But uh, C CBJ playing in Ohio Stadium, yeah, next year. I, I got to go to that. It's just the for the spectacle of it. I got to go to that. Yes. All right. Now 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 we'll get into Buckeye football here, Jared. That will be so sick, as Gangland. I'm I'm down. I'm just. I'm not I'm not even like a CBJ March fan, March first, but I'm just down. March just first next year. Yes, 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 yes. March yes. first. Next year, 2025. CBJ taking on Detroit Red Wings. Yes. All right, Jared, the 2025 class here. Yep. Um start off. Like to start here. Uh, start off at the top. Um Tavian St. Clair, still the quarterback in this class. I don't expect that to change. Um, as far as the mock goes, 
you know, we, we do have to be aware that just because a guy's committed doesn't mean he'll stay committed. Um, I, I have I have no concerns with St. Clair, however. That's it. That's 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 my assessment of the quarterback recruiting. Mm-hmm. What about we got you got you got a pair of running backs here that's on our on our class mock here. No, none of these are are committed yet, but we got Bo Jackson mm-hmm. from the state of Ohio, and then going down to Florida, uh, Brian Lewis. Yeah. Um... I think I think Jackson's a, a must add. Um, you know, I've heard some talk about, you know, is he a running back, is he a linebacker? I I, I think he's a running back. Um I I I think that there are two really good running backs in the state of Ohio this year. I I think that Ohio State likes Jackson more at this point um than than they do Marquise Davis. And there's also two, for lack of a better term, national or out of state running backs who they really like and they have a really good relationship with. Um, Byron Lewis, as Kyle pointed out, um, but also out of California, Jordan Davis. Um, I'm always wary of. I believe he's a. <laughs> He's a martyr day kid, isn't he? Uh huh. He sure is. Yeah, and I, I know like I'll and and with Chris Henry Jr., who's a wide receiver from the 2026 class, transferring to Mater Day. Maybe that helps. You you Ohio State Ohio State, it's a curse. With the with the with this high school in Ohio State, it's an absolute curse. You think you're going to get a guy, you're thinking to get a guy, then then you don't get the guy. It's an absolute curse. Um, maybe having maybe having Chris Henry in the locker room will help. You know, I think a lot of people saw that and they're like, "Oh no, now we're going to lose Chris Henry Jr." Well, or maybe, or maybe it helps to reverse the curse. And the Big Ten's officially a California conference now. So. I That's don't know. a weird thing. It, 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 <laughs> to it, say it, is a, it is a weird thing to say. Um, you got Chip Kelly now. Who's used to recruiting California. Maybe you break the curse, but I'm not going to believe it until I see it. So I'm going to stick with uh, Byron Lewis and I'm going to stick with Bo Jackson. I think he's a lot more interested in Ohio State than previous kids from there. I've heard that one before. I've heard it. I've heard that before. Just going to say I've heard that one before. Yeah. Oh, I'm hitting the copium. I I, I know you are. I mean, maybe I am with the Chris Henry <laughs> Jr. thing, too. And maybe I am. With, but again, you got Chris Henry Jr. in the locker room now. You have a... California recruiting expert in the house now. Maybe things change, but I'll believe it when I see it. So until then, I'm going to, I'm going to stick with, I'm going to stick with Lewis and Jackson. All right. What do you want to start next here? Which, uh, which just, position just, you like? just keep going down the line. Just keep going down the line. All right. We got, we got to, <laughs> Got some wide receivers here. How many, how many of these are five stars, Jared? <laughs> <laughs> how many of these are five stars? <laughs> um, I'm not too worried about stars at this point. The for who we're still pretty early in the cycle, as we like to say. Um, the stars can shift around. I'm not super worried about it at this point. Um, you already have a uh, Javon Boggs in the recruiting class out of Florida. Uh, I think you add wide receiver from Ohio, Quinton Simmons Jr. on top of Boggs. Um, And and I am at this point thinking it's a three wide receiver class. Um, And I say that largely because, and yes, Quinton Simmons Jr. did recently commit to Kentucky. I don't care. Um, 
Jamie French, who we're also going to talk about here in a second, used to be committed to Alabama. Guys commit, guys decommit. I'm not worried about it. Um, I, and, you know, I, I, right now I'm, I'm keep, I think this is going to be a smaller wide receiver class. I'm going to keep it at Boggs, Simmons and French for now. I, I think that they have good relationships outside of, of that of that group. Um, Vernell Brown is a guy who I, I think has some recent heat on him. He's out of Florida. Uh, Edward Coleman out of Georgia. Kalik Lockett out of Texas. Philip Bell out of California, Quincy Porter out of New Jersey, some guys to keep an eye on. So if it, let's say the Quentin Simmons jr. To Kentucky thing really sticks. Maybe he's, he's dead set on that. And that sticks. I, I there, you know, heartline will get heartline. will get it done. Yep. Faith, faith and heartline here. Faith and heartline. Hey, what about the tight ends? The tight ends are, interesting here very interesting um it seems like uh, it seems like ohio state at times can get pretty much the pick of the can get some really diamond in the roughs here and other in other recruiting classes there's just like kind of a big old whiff here so two two name two names here um everybody i think pretty much everyone's familiar with uh luca gilbert uh the kid out of uh westchester here mm-hmm. um uh, I think i think he's a uh, I think that's a name that a lot of people already recognize here. But the other one, the other one that uh, Ohio State really likes here, and, and I think uh, vice versa yeah, too, likes Ohio versa. State as well, is uh, Nate Roberts. And those are the two guys who I have in the mock at this time. Um, however, I will say, um, out of Indiana, uh, Brock shot. There's been a lot of conversation and a lot of back and forth with with Brock shot as well. Um, where was my reminder ping? Damn it. it did, I mean, I you. it's the same damn time every week, Austin. I don't know what to tell you, man. Um, <laughs> it's it's 830 on a Sunday unless we say otherwise. I don't know what to tell you. Um, I have ADD. Don't we all? <laughs> Mine's diagnosed. How about you? <laughs> cool. Uh, we, we have the same brain. We've had that conversation before, so I'm not surprised. Uh, uh, but yeah, uh, Brock Shot, I think, is another guy who I absolutely keeping an eye on. Um, it, is, it is a two tight end class, and I think Ohio State's in really good spots in a really good spot with three guys. Um, sometimes it might just be who commits first. Yep. Um, it might be. It's, sometimes it comes down to that. So, and by the way, Landon Pace is also out there, a name we've brought up before. Uh, yes. That he, he is his son. Um, uh, he is at this point considered a tight end. Uh, I, I don't expect that to change for the record. Um, although he, you know, through a lot of the services is also marked as, uh, an athlete, but the, I think the three guys to keep an eye on are Gilbert Roberts and, and shot. Um, right now I'm going with Roberts and, and Gilbert. If, if shot ends up being one of the two guys, I won't be shocked. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Uh, I'll say this though, our... Nate Roberts, I think is, if I had to pick one, it's, I think it'll be Nate Roberts. And then mm-hmm. it's between Gilbert and shot for the other one is, is how I'm thinking about it today. All right, Jared, uh, probably the biggest position in my mind of, are you rolling with one or two? I'm really, tracking really need to, uh, two tight ends. Position that Ohio State's really, really needing to focus on here, Jared, is that offensive line here. So, a lot, a lot of names here. A lot of names. Lot, I, I think so. There, it's it's still you can't. In my mind, you can't have an off there, year with 
with the offensive line. You, you got to get some studs in here every, some every studs, year. Sure. Or some studs, absolutely. So let's, but but I think this will be so, a smaller offensive line class. Um, right, how many? How many are you thinking of? Like four. I I mean I say four every year, but I normally say four or five. This year I'm thinking three or four. And as Austin just said in the chat, because 2026 is insane, and 2026 the offensive uh, line grew uh, crew out of Ohio, but not just out of Ohio, but also just regionally around Ohio state is excellent. And they already have a really good relationship with Micah Smith out of Florida. Who's really, really good. Um, but but it, sorry, I'm going to divert to 2026 for a second. Will Conroy, Sam Greer, Maxwell Riley. Those are three guys in Ohio who are amazing. Those are three guys in Ohio who are amazing, who I feel very good that you can get all three of them. Um, you also have um, Breedy out of Ohio, who I think, depending upon how he develops, could also very easily be a Buckeye. And then just regionally, Deron Parks out of West Virginia, Jackson Cantwell out of Missouri, Tyler Morrell out of Pennsylvania. Uh, Adam Gunthrey is another guy out of Ohio to keep an eye on, depending upon how he develops. Um, and then, like I said, Micah Smith is a, a an elite offensive tackle who Ohio State, like I said, is already like really hitting it off with. Point is, is that you could very easily see Ohio State take six offensive linemen in the 2026 class. So in preparation for that, as I divert back to 2025, in preparation for that, I think this is a four, but maybe three offensive line class. And not to mention, I think you had a bunch of studs, uh, and I know a lot, not all of them are rated as studs, but in my opinion, I think you had a lot of studs in the 2025 class. So you already have Carter Lowe. Let's, That's huge. As I say, let's start with the stud. Let's start with the stud here. <laughs> yeah carter carter Lowe here one of the best not just in in the state of ohio but in the country as well yeah. you get you get this guy in wearing the scarlet and gray here that's 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 a big plus that's a big plus compared to a couple of years that we've seen with the uh recruiting on the offensive line here so you get you get a stud tackle coming in that's a, yeah. that's a big that's a big one in my in my book there absolutely huge uh, win some other some other names here, if we're, if we're going to stick to the state of Ohio, again, not currently rated high or anything. Um, you can look at, if this allows me to bring it over, it is not. Nolan <laughs> uh, Davenport. Nolan Davenport. Yeah. Yep. Nolan Davenport is another one to to keep an eye out for. Um, Raphael uh, Green is another one out of uh, Cincinnati is another name to keep an eye and out Davenport's for. Davenport's out of Maslin, Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, so I think those are two others in the state of Ohio here. Um, I think those are the three. For what it's yeah. worth, I think those are the three. Okay. And again, like someone might totally show out their senior season. These Those things happen. But for Ohio State right now, I think it's low Davenport and green. And I wouldn't be totally shocked, especially since low and Davenport are tackles a lot of times we're like oh, tackle guard guard tackle tackle davenport and lower tackles these are tackles green's an interior guy so maybe you add another interior guy nationally um uh javon mcfadden i think is the guy i'm going to include in the mock uh he's out of maryland so I am I am doing a four person offensive line mock. Uh, again, low Davenport Green and McFadden, three Ohio guys plus a Maryland guy. Uh, you have Jermail Atkins from the state of Ohio out there. Um, I I don't 
know at this point if he is a Ohio State level guy. Um, you have Douglas uh, Uto. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, UTO or UTU. Um, he's out of Vegas. Uh, Ty Harwood is a guy who I've had in the mock in previous mo- in previous mocks. I don't have him in this mock. Um, Ohio State's trying really, really hard to get Micah DeBoss out of Alabama. Good luck. <laughs> but yeah. they're trying. They're trying. Uh, we'll see. They're trying, and we'll see. If, if, if it's to happen any time now, Jared, with Saban gone, <laughs> with Saban gone, not, the time is now. <laughs> not just Saban gone, Kyle. It's not just Saban gone. Remember when we were talking about like the, the coaching shuffle, you know, obviously Alabama goes and they, and they get basically the entire Washington coaching staff. Right. And what you have to remember about the Washington coaching staff is they have or had uh, one of the best offensive line coaches in the country and brought him over to Bama. Uh, the, um, Oh, I'm going to, bl- what's, what's the, what's the award called for the best offensive line group? Um, um, it's, it's blanking me, but Washington, uh, the Joe Moore. Thank you, Austin. Yes. Washington won the Joe Moore last year. They brought that offensive line coach over. So you're like, oh man, I was really hoping to not have Alabama take up all the, all, all the offensive line, all, especially all the tackles every year, but man, they just went and. Well, guess what? He's he's already left. He's off to the NFL. So Alabama has lost two straight offensive linemen in the past month, or excuse me, offensive line coaches in the past month. Kind of open things up maybe for Michael DeBoss, but then again, he's also like in really good with Auburn. So we'll see. I, I'm not including him in the in the mock. Another guy who I don't really see, but I'm still keeping a close eye on is Avery Gack out of Michigan. This is a guy who you fully expect to go to Michigan, except that Michigan is real chaotic right now as we've. <laughs> no, I'm going to add another name. Uh, uh, G-A-C-H. G-A-C-H. I'm going to add another name in here, Jared. Lamont Rogers. Only putting in here just because uh, Justin Fry um, recently met with him and was very impressed with their uh, meeting and is in talks about visiting Ohio State twice this year. Yeah. So this is another another name to keep an eye out, uh, kid out of uh, Texas here. Yeah, uh, it's 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 very wide open. Um, is Fry succeeding now? I think Ohio State's going. I think Ohio State just had a very good offensive line class, and I think that they're well poised to have a really good offensive line class, although smaller, in twenty twenty five, and then an excellent offensive line class uh, for twenty twenty six. Like they they don't have to leave the state to to get, but they will. But they also don't have to leave the state to get an excellent offensive line class out of uh you know for for 2026 you could you could just take smith excuse me smith's from florida we could just take conway uh, greer riley breedy and um gun and that's a pretty good as a it's better offensive line class than we've had the past few years now i don't think that they will do that I think Conway, Greer, Riley are, you can count on, but I think that they will also try to get like a huge offensive tackle nationally. And right now that looks really good, like it might be Micah Smith. But again, we need to stop talking about 2026. (laughs) Uh, uh, So that's it. That is it for the offensive side here. Uh, Before we go to the defense side, we will take a quick ad break here. Again, if you want to skip out on these ad breaks, um, 
come join the discord here or the be Patreon. a patron and you can and you can go ahead and uh bypass these these ads here so we will be right back and talk to the defensive side all right now we are back from commercial unless of course uh we're back from a awkward pause if you don't hear the commercials <laughs> one of those two things just happened defense kyle we already have one defensive end what, what can you tell us about sahir mathis uh stud absolute stud <laughs> fair <laughs> absolute absolute stud he's he's gonna i think he's gonna have a great 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 career at at ohio state one of one of the best ed rushers edge rushers in the in the country here coming to put on the scarlet and gray here yeah just i mean you, you look you look at the dimensions of this kid six six two twenty five he's yeah i don't know if he could come in right away and uh start but definitely can come in and contribute as a as a true freshman <laughs> kind of tiny <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah i mean he could start at a lot of programs he, he's, he, i don't think he's yeah, gonna start so he, at he's, a high he's just right that's away. yeah he's just that special of a of a player i i know you're speaking being of sarcastic. another yeah speaking of another special player here man winton woods winton woods has some studs uh this year yes, uh, they do. justin hill defensive end here in the state of Ohio, another kid to keep eye out for that I think Ohio State is looking at here could potentially bring in uh, for this class here. Now, as of right now, I only have these two defensive ends in the class. Because the defensive ends were a bit light last year, it's totally plausible and that you see a third one added. But as of right well, now, I'm just doing a two person mock uh, for the defensive ends. I'm just throwing well, I, it out I there also what, that I that I don't think. Or, I, I, you know, it's totally possible that they go third, that they go three. Right now, it's just two. My mock right now is just two. But keep an eye out on uh, Damian um, Shanklin out of Indiana. There's some really good guys out of Indiana this year. You have um, Brock Schott, the tight end who we talked about. Marion Dye, a defensive tackle who we haven't talked about the defensive tackles yet. And then, like I said, uh, Demarion Shanklin, uh, I think, is a possibility. Um, as Kyle puts the 24-7 uh, screenshot on the screen, He's very, he's a heavy Notre Dame lean right now. Could that change? Will that change? Who knows? Uh, but you no, know, uh, Javian Hilson out of Florida is another defensive end to keep an eye on. Cedric works out of Ohio, I think is very plausible. Um, London Merritt out of Georgia might be a bit of a long shot, but also not a total long shot. So, if you're looking for a third defensive end in the class, uh, I, I think, like I said, Shanklin, Hilson, Works, Merritt, all guys to keep an eye on. Um, either, like I said, mm -hmm. as a third guy, or in case like Mathis, you know, it happens. Mathis could decommit, or Justin Hill could decide to go play for someone else. I feel really good about Mathis and Hill, and I think the only reason why I don't include a third player at this time is that I don't feel super confident about any one of the other defensive ends who I named. Well, one thing you didn't even mention here, too, is who Ohio State uh, got back this year, too. They're not really needing pressure to really get another person, too. Well, but, but you have to fast forward. You have to fast forward a season when you're talking about recruiting. So, you know, JTT will be gone and yeah, the, and the, 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 the problem you might run into, you have Sawyer and JTT returning. 
what does that potentially do for the younger guys who, you know, it, it kind of could edge them out, which then leaves a gap of talent. But we haven't seen that yet. So, you know, we won't worry about mm. that yet. But it's a thing you have to worry about. It is. It is. Who's a good right. replacement Let's rush edge? In- I don't know. Cedric works. What are Oh, Cedric. I had to say it out loud to get the joke, Gangland. Um, I, I apologize. <laughs> I don't know, Cedric. Well, well, let's let's talk about the let's talk about the uh, the interior defensive line here, Jared. Um, so you got here um, two two defensive tackles in here, yes. uh, starting off with the in-state one, not not highly not highly rated uh, currently right now. Uh, Brandon, yeah, Brandon Caesar. And also another guy in here, Jared, I'm going to guess this is another diamond in the rough you're looking at here um, out in Maryland here, uh, Darian Smith. Yeah, the, I'm not. I'm not super worried. It's it's too early to worry about recruiting rankings too much at this point. That, that's I know Ohio State likes these guys. That's all that matters. If Ohio State likes the guys, we like the guys. Quite frankly, that's how that works. Uh, so right now, two defensive tackles. Two defensive tackles in the in my mock right now, Caesar and Smith. Other guys to keep an eye on. I already mentioned Marion Dye from Indiana. Um, Maxwell Roy, who is from Pennsylvania. Um, He is from St. Joseph's Prep, a high school that Ohio State has had success with recently. Uh, And Trent Wilson, who's another Maryland kid. So if 50% hit right there, no comment. Um, Yeah, so I, I think they're in good position with a lot of guys. And the guys who we just mentioned, Marion Dye, Maxwell Roy, Trent Wilson, are all actually more highly ranked than the guys I have in the class if we're paying super close attention to recruiting rankings right now, which I once again implore you not to do. Uh, I, you know, don't don't get obsessed with that stuff yet. Brandon Caesar, especially like Brandon Caesar can play Ohio State level football. Trust me on that. But, you know, you take two, maybe three defensive tackles. Um, Right now, again, I'm looking at two. I'm looking at Caesar and Smith. Could it be a third? Sure. Could it, could you, could it not be Darian Smith, but it ends up being one of the other or two of the other guys? Sure. I feel very good about Brandon Caesar right now. Darian Smith, I'm not going to like swear to. I'll swear to Brandon Caesar. Mm-hmm. Brandon Caesar is going to be a Buckeye. I, I feel incredibly good about that. Defensive yeah. tackle. I think we're looking to fill one or two slots with the four guys I mentioned. And of course it's February and, and it could end up being some other guy who we aren't even looking at right now, as it ends up almost always being, it'll end up being yeah. someone else. But right now with the information we have, Caesar's in, and then, like I said, we have Darian Smith, Marion Dye, Maxwell Roy, Trent Wilson to fill one or two of those other slots. Right now, who's the second? Darian Smith. Darian Smith is the guy who I have in the mock. Today. <laughs> Anyone in the Discord who follow... Because, okay, if you're in our Discord, discord.thesloopcast.com, I keep a mock... Always be plugging. Always, yeah, always be plugging. I keep the mo- I keep the mock live updated in the Discord all the time. I will I constantly change it. I have been known to change the mock the day after we publish a mock episode. I have done it in the past. I will do it again. And probably will. I probably will. It's called ADD. A little bit. But also it's just called these are high school kids. He did it after Alfred. Yeah, I I added T.J. Alfred. Uh, in, in 
also like the cornerbacks and the safeties who we haven't really got to yet. Like who's a cornerback and who's a safety is a little bit fluid for Ohio state right now. And we'll talk about that when we get there. So I've made that shift a few times. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, that's, I feel very good about Brandon Caesar and I have Darian Smith in the mock who I could very easily have one of the other guys in the mock. Oh, we'll, we'll get to the DBs here. <laughs> we'll get to the DBs, but first let's, the let's DB, talk about the LBs. The DB situation is very confusing, <laughs> but in the best possible way, because Ohio State has a bunch of guys for not a lot of slots, which is the best problem to have, of course. Let's talk about the linebackers here, Jared. First name here on the list here, great name. Great name here with uh, with the history of... Uh, the Buckeye defense here, uh, mixing two two studs on defense. Eli Lee, yeah, uh, I think I think that's a that's a great defensive name to go to Ohio State here. Sure, uh, Eli's out of uh, Archbishop Hoban here. Uh, again, not really ra- currently rated high <laughs> right now, but yeah, he looks like a linebacker. Yes, it's the neck. <laughs> Whenever you see a dude whose neck is bigger around than his head, that you like that's a linebacker. <laughs> yes. Um, another name that we have on the list here. I'm going to head down to Florida. I'm going to hit up a uh, Travis Alford here. Also known uh, as TJ. Currently, yep. Also known as TJ. He will be announcing March 30th here. Yep. So. Keep, it, keep an eye on on his recruit here. And another one here, uh, Jared and I were just talking about him uh, before we hit the, uh, the record button here, but uh, uh, we have Madden uh, uh, Foremo as well, too. Uh, kid out we, we, of California. Got, got, we, got, we, a, got, we a, may, got a couple of kids out of California here. We, we may have been looking up how to, how to pronounce his last name. Uh, details details jerry we were talking about at him, least so. <laughs> we're trying <laughs> does anyone know is the ucla softball pitcher related because when we went to figure out how to pronounce his last name um the we found a ucla pronunciation guide for a softball pitcher with a last name are they related if anyone knows please let me know um I'm thinking at yeah, least can, can I'll get smash out of, the um, over. Yeah. Yep. Who's yep, the UCLA uh, player, uh, softball pitcher of with the last name? If you trust yeah, uh, me, so he, if so you he's Google a, he's a, he's a, how to pronounce and then his last name, she will pop up. I promise. Yeah, he, he's out of California, the fourth best prospect out of the state of Ohio, or excuse me, not Ohio, California. <laughs> uh, 70, <laughs> 76. 76th overall or 38th overall in the composite rankings. Yeah. Um, going out to California. Would be a big get for, would be a big get that, for Ohio State. Here. Austin confirms that that is, in fact, his sister. I'm just going to trust you. Oh, and she's on the Olympic team. Hell yeah. Got, gotta right, love what, those what genetics. Say about, in, in, anything else with these three here, Jared, or? Um, with those three, not specifically, um, uh, class of 2025 linebacker Madden, um, picks up UCLA offer, same brain cell. Yeah. Um, keep a, uh, keep a very close eye. Those are the three linebackers we're going with right now. Eli Lee, TJ Alford, Madden, Kyle, once again, how do we pronounce it? Um, for Ramo, for Ramo, Madden for Ramo. Those are the three guys I'm going with right now. All right. I have four more names for you. Uh, two, I really want you to keep a close eye on Elijah Mm -hmm. Melendez out of Florida. He is currently committed as you might be able to see if you're watching the YouTube video. Kyle puts his 24 seven profile in the chat. He is currently committed to Miami. Not concerned. Uh, And Dante McClellan 
out of Ohio is uh, another guy who I think could very easily end up in this class. Um, Elijah Barnes and uh, Nasir Wyatt uh, out of Texas and California uh, are two guys to also keep a, a, a close eye on. Um, but I am, I'm, I feel good about Lee Alford and Faremo. Those are the three I'm going with right now. Although Melendez and McClellan definitely keep a close eye on. Mm-hmm. Are you ready to talk corners here, Jared? We don't <laughs> have a lot to talk about with corners. So again, if you're in the discord server and you, and you, and you, you keep an eye on our 2025 mock class channel where you can constantly track day to day, how I'm adjusting the mock class discord.thesloopcast.com always be plugging I ca- I have three separate lists I have the actual mock then I have a watch list which I call the short list then I have an extended list I have backup players other players to watch on the short list at every single position except corner. <laughs> I feel like Ohio State is very set at corner right now. They already have three commitments. Blake would be out of Virginia, Devin Sanchez out of Texas, and Naeem Olford offered um out of Alabama. Uh, Alabama. The first Alabama commit in 40 years or something like that. We'll see if he, we'll see if he actually signs. We'll see if he actually signs. But for now, first Alabama commit to Ohio state in something like 40 years. Insane. Absolutely insane. Um, Right now, those are your three corners. Uh, easy to be set when you have the two top corners and the top nickel since the 80s. Uh, that would be about 40 years ago. I don't really want to admit that the 80s was 40 years ago, but here we are. Um, <laughs> the uh, that that That's it. That's it on the corners, sort of. Well, sort of. That's it on the corners, well, sort of. Um, would be is the number 12 cornerback in the country. Sanchez is the number one quarterback in the country offered uh, is the number two cornerback in the country. You literally have the one and two cornerbacks in the country right now. It's kind of like what <laughs> I, I teach, teach history. With defense, I'm in age pain de- every day. That's fair. With, with the defensive ends just a few years ago with two and um, Sawyer. Uh, Sawyer. Thank you. I said Proctor. I'm like, no, it's not Dr. Sawyer. Yes. All right. Safeties, Jared. Moving on to the last position, safeties here. So no current commits here, but we um, got three names, three names to, to throw out here. Uh, first off, we have uh, Fahim Delane. Yes. Uh, out of Maryland here. Number one safety in the country. Mm-hmm. Also another highly... <laughs> Highly recruited uh, guy out of Texas here, uh, Dorian Brew now, out of Texas. Uh, let me pause. On, let me pause on you on that one, Kyle. Is he currently in Texas? Yes, he is. However, mm-hmm. he grew up in Ohio. His mother ran track in Ohio, uh, or for Ohio State. Not not just in Ohio for Ohio State. Mm-hmm. He, he is an Ohio State legacy. Don't but, don't let the te- don't let the Texas thing oh, throw oh, oh, you oh. off. Okay, but 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 you got to watch out for you got to watch out for LSU though. His dad was a former LSU sprinter as well too. This this is true. But he grew up in Ohio. His, his, he didn't grow up. He didn't grow up in Louisiana. He grew up in Ohio. Hold on, hold on. Here, here. I wanna I wanna just I just put this out in here. Yes, the mother is a member of the Ohio State Athletics Hall of Fame. His dad was an Olympic gold medalist in the 4x4. 
as well. So <laughs> you think he's fast? Uh, he has. Yeah, he, yeah. He he runs a ten seven five one hundred. You remember last I, last spring? The NCAA game is 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 coming out in a few months. You remember when you go to create a player? And you'd like roll for your genetics and then oh, you just self- keep rolling until you found a, a track star. Right, that's that's 1075 as a sophomore. And he hasn't he hasn't run track as a junior yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh shit, he says. <laughs> as a so as a freshman, he ran an 1118. So he went 1118 to 1075. Damn, so he's he's probably 10-6, maybe pushing 10-5 this year. He's fast, is the point. Um, yeah, hormones are crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Austin says he'll run 10-4 or 10-5 this year. Crazy. Um, yeah. So but here, here's... Guy, you're talking about you're, ta- you're, you're talking about kids out of Ohio. Um, Got to talk about um, a, a Sloop Cat favorite here, uh, Trey McNutt, as yes. well, out of Cleveland. Uh, Shaker Heights High School. Now, here, uh, one here. of the best safeties and kid out of and, and recruits out of the state of Ohio, too. Yes. Here's the thing. Uh, Trey McNutt, I think people have. He was first being talked about as a corner. And I think people are uh, starting to shift him to safety, which I do think is his more natural spot. Dorian Brew, however, I talked a lot about wait, we're done at corner, sort of. Those are the three corners, sort of. Dorian Brew, mm-hmm. I don't think it's settled at this point whether he's a corner or a safety. Uh, I and is, if you're an Ohio State fan trying to fill out a mock draft, or excuse me, a mock class, like I'm uh, attempting to do. Yeah, Trey well, is a by dog. the way, like t- Talk, well, hold on. Let talk, me finish that thought. Let me finish that. that thought, Kyle. The important thing to keep in mind is that Ohio State will take six defensive backs at least this class. Does that mean three safeties and three corners, or does that mean two safeties and four corners? And does it matter which category that Dorian Brew is in? It doesn't matter. Let's well, let's not let's not um, throw out Trey McNutt too. Trey could I think could be all over the field too. I mentioned how quick uh, uh, Dorian Brew was. Yeah. Let's let's not forget how fast Trey McNutt is. Well, being corner isn't just two, speed though. I, I know ten eight two ten eight two is what Trey ran as a sophomore as well. Yeah, yeah. Almost just as quick. Just as quick as Dorian there, so <laughs> yeah, bum. <laughs> uh, Point is, is that Ohio yeah, State so, can easily get six, maybe seven, mm-hmm. stud defensive backs in this class, because I get for the sake of this mock, I am doing six. It's would be, it's Sanchez, it's offered at corner, it's Delane and McNutt at safety. And Dorian Brew goes in one of those two categories. I have him in the safety spot, but who cares? He's a corner. He's a safety. He's a yeah. safety. He's a corner. They'll figure it out at camp time. I don't care. Yeah. But any, I do want I do want people other... to keep an eye on two additional safeties who Ohio mm-hmm. State would take. On top of these six, there are two additional safeties that Ohio State would absolutely take into this class. And I don't think that they go to eight. But they, but they might go to seven. One is Cody Haddad. Kyle put the yes, he is currently committed to Wisconsin, uh, but he's from Cleveland. I'm not concerned. I think if the mothership welcomes him home, he'll take it. And then there's Messiah Delome, who is a guy who I've had in the mo- in previous mock classes, um, and who I think Ohio State would absolutely take if given the opportunity. If the mothership calls, if the mothership calls, man, if if Cody, if, if Ohio State said, Cody Haddad, here's an offer that is actionable. He already has an offer, but here's an actionable offer. If you don't know the difference, an offer is when they give you a scholarship offer. That should be the end of the story, but college football recruiting is unfortunately uh, more seedy than that. Um, 
Then there's what they call an actionable offer, which means you can commit whenever you want. This is a this is an offer that you can actually act upon. This is an actionable offer. Um, if Ohio State did a full court press to make a basketball analogy, please don't turn off the podcast. We're not talking about basketball. If I did a full court press on Cody Haddad, I believe he would come home. So he already, ha- already, already has uh, quite a nice list for offers already. Alabama and Florida State as well as Ohio State as, um, as well. So, yeah, we'll, we'll see. We'll see with Messiah here. I already did, I did the, the thing. thing already. Yeah, we kind of did already, the thing already. Kind of already did the thing. <laughs> is that it, Jared? Is, is that the list here? Yeah, um, let's let's roll through that again super quick. Uh, Tavian St. Clair at quarterback running backs, Bo Jackson and Byron Lewis wide receivers, uh, Javon Boggs, Quinton Simmons, Jr. And Jamie French tight ends, Nate Roberts, Luca Gilbert, offensive line, Carter Lowe, Nolan Davenport, Raphael Green and Javon McFadden defensive ends, Zaheer Manthus and Justin Hill defensive tackles, Brandon Caesar and Darian Smith linebackers, Eli Lee, TJ Alford, and Madden uh, Faremo, uh, cornerbacks Blake would be Devin Sanchez and Naheem offered safeties. Fahim Delane, Dorian Brew, Trey McNutt. And yes, you can go ahead and put Dorian Brew at corner if you want. I don't care. That's the mock class. That's the mock class. There are some very important guys to keep an eye on. Oh, Kyle did, or no, excuse me. Uh, that was, that was gangland, uh, did a projected class, the projected 2024 class with my mock. Uh, that's a score of 318.54 according to the current rankings. Uh, that's not bad. And yes, that does come out to 25 see, commits. Three, so 318 will put you first place in the 2023 class. Um, I mean, sorry, the 2024 class. It would put you second in 2023. It would put you fourth in 2022. 2022, man. Um, But to be fair, that 2022, (laughs) how many of those... How many of those players left Texas A&M too? <laughs> All of them. <laughs> Honestly. Five stars in that one. I'm curious. I'm curious on where, where they ended up. Actually, I'm not because we're out of time, Jared. <laughs> yeah, and we actually forgot to do a second ad break. So we're going to do that real quick right now. If you want to avoid these ad breaks, go to uh, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Uh, $3 a month or $32 a year. Okay, awkward pause and or ad break done. Austin says that would be five five stars crazy. I of those I of feel those like eight, but for, for what it's worth, for what it's worth, Austin. I feel like this is a very realistic class. I don't feel like I did any wish casting here. I feel like mm-hmm. this is a hyper realistic class. Uh, in, in early mocks, I've did a little bit of wish casting. This mock is based off of current information. Of course, it'll be wrong. Of course, there'll be so much of this wrong because this is February and so much will change. But as we sit right now, this is a very realistic mock. I think Elijah Melendez is more realistic in a month or two. Elijah Melendez Melendez is incredibly realistic right now. He's incredibly realistic right now. I could have very easy put him in the class instead of uh, for Ramo. Could have very easy. That's like as a coin flip. I could have very easily put him in the class instead of uh, for Ramo. That was a coin flip for me. Um. Hey, hey Jared, remember when I mentioned um, before the ad break here, Texas A&M had that eight, five stars for the 2022 class. Yeah. 
only 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 three of them have stayed. I'm surprised it's that many. <laughs> I'm not even. I'm surprised it's that many. Man, I'm, look, I'm actually a little look, bit at, shocked at, it's that many. Looking at that LT LT Overton. That was that was a name that we we've mentioned a number of times. And he was in the portal. He ended up taking himself out of the portal, but he went into the portal this offseason. He's 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 back. No, he's 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 on it. He's 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 a crimson tide now. Oh, he did leave. OK, my bad. Uh, their yeah, defensive did, tackle went to the, Ole Miss. The, he was one of the best guys in yeah, the portal yeah. this year. Uh, let's see. Walter Nolan left. Evan Stewart left. Uh, Shamar Stewart stayed. Gabrielle uh, Brownlow stayed. LT Overton went to Alabama. Their quarterback, Connor, stayed. Chris Marshall left. And uh, Anthony Lucas left. That was their five stars for that class. Uh, what about Peyton Pierce? Gangland, what are you um, asking? Mm, mm, that might have been a different recruiting class. I have to look. Well, Peyton Pierce committed to Ohio State, yes. He signed. Yeah. So just, you just like asking about like winter workouts. Yeah. 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 I'm not sure what you're asking. Literally anything related to him. No, not really. No, <laughs> <laughs> I, I have not. Um, He's, he's a spring enrollee. That's, that's what I know at this point. Um, Yep. Winter workout reports are like, hey, everyone's working out real hard right now. And they're working out real hard. And it's nothing but positive news at this point. You know, we'll, we'll, once we get into the, like spring camp stuff, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll hear more. Yeah, yeah. Um, Kyle, we have some Ask Slugcast questions. Let's knock those out and then we'll end this podcast. All right. Uh Austin, I'll start us off here. Do you think that in general, Ohio State prioritize Ohio or a different state more? What are the top five states Ohio State prioritizes? Ohio is I mean, the priority. You, you, yeah, you you got to keep your your best in state here. You you got you got to keep you, you got to keep those recruits in, um, yeah. in the state of Ohio. There, the other the other states here. I mean. I mean, Ohio State's had success down in Florida. You, 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 keep, Florida, you keep going down to Florida and Texas. Florida, Georgia. Texas, I think, are and Georgia. Those those are the three main ones. Um, maybe you yeah, start sure. looking out in California, which we we which we've mentioned a number of times. Uh, I wouldn't call California episode. a priority, though. I feel like you just yeah, cherry pick priority. out of California. If you're talking, there are four main. St- Okay, so there are four main states that produce talent. There are four S-tier talent states in college football. Georgia, Florida, no particular order. Georgia, Florida, Texas, California. That's where most of the talent's produced. Three of those states are priorities for Ohio, for Ohio State. California, I wouldn't call it priority. The other three, I would. So then Ohio becomes the, the four, you know, the four main priorities for Ohio State are the are Florida, Georgia, no particular order, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and Ohio. Who is the fifth? Ah, I, Pennsylvania, Indiana, Maryland, Virginia, Illinois. Dare I say, dare I say, Jared, maybe, maybe might get some looks here. Maryland slash New Jersey. Starting to see more New and Jersey. more recruits out of there. Absolutely. Um, I mean, you, you could basically draw a circle around like the New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Maryland area and, and call that like a priority spot. And, you know, like when I say Pennsylvania, I'm talking specifically like Eastern Pennsylvania, Ohio state's been going to Philadelphia a lot lately. Um, between St. Joseph's and Emotep, they've made a lot of trips to Philadelphia recently. So I think you could sort of draw a line or a circle 
around that general area. Uh, but I, I wouldn't say there, there's a bunch of different states that you could call the fifth state. You Indiana, in 2025, you could say it's Indiana. Ohio State has three big targets in Indiana right now. I included none of them in the mock, but it's early. Um, Brock shot, I think, could very, very, very easily end up in this recruiting class. Marion Dye, Damian Shanklin. Three Indiana players who could very easily end up in the mock. I didn't include them in the mock. I could have. Very easily could have included all three of them in the mock. There are certainly... Um, Virginia, Maryland are states. The D.C. area in general has been great for Ohio State recently. So, Philadelphia has been so great for the, Ohio this, State recently. Look, looking at this one forum here, the top states producing in recent years. Sure. Texas, Georgia, Florida, California, Alabama are the obvious ones. Alabama, Ohio, really? Would, would, right? would Alabama, I wouldn't put Alabama in the... Well, over the past couple of years, they've ranked them in the, what was that? One, What's the metric? Like, what are they, how are they one, ranking One, two, them? three, four, five, over the past three years. Yeah, but. Like, just overall, like, number number of, um, what, what is that here? Top, top 300. Top, top 300, 300 players? Yep. Okay. All right. I'll, so, I'll... so Alabama fifth, and then they got Ohio right there, and then Maryland Pennsylvania and North Carolina. Yeah. I, North I think Carolina that's is another one too. That's one of the reasons why the Tar Heels um, are, I would say a priority in the next, in the next, uh, once the ACC falls apart, then we do the next big conference realignment shuffle. I think that's one of the reasons why the Tar Heels and for that and for what it's worth, for the uh for, and Virginia, I think are priority targets. Even if, yeah, you know, the Tar Heels have had some recent decent college football success, but uh, you know that's if we start calling North Carolina a football power, where you know, that's a lot of recency bias. If we're being honest, um, but I think they are a priority because of their academics because of the emerging city market that they're in and also because of recruiting territory. Um, yeah, I think that's one of the reasons why the Tar Heels are one of the teams that the SEC and the Big Ten are going to fight over. Uh, next question... What were uh, what's a recruit we had that didn't play much and transferred that has bummed you out big time could be over any years. Has anyone transferred out? That you've been super bummed about like, sure, it would have been nice to have yours this year. I think that's fair. But yours, you were said it's me or Stroud. And I, I, I liked I liked having Stroud so that, you know, if we're doing that math, I'm glad that, you know, they, they, they let him walk. Um, I think we transferred. I don't think we've lost a transfer player that I felt super bummed about. Jameson Williams had great success at Alabama, obviously. Um, but Ohio State was so stacked at wide receiver that year that I don't blame anyone for that. I think everyone made the correct choice. Could have used Ryan Watts in 22. Yeah. Um, it's his name. The um, defensive end that transferred out. Oh. Um, like 10 years ago. Yeah, but they're. I've drawn the blank on his name. Yeah, I know exactly who you're talking about. Um, I, I know there was issues. There, was there, issues were, ac there were academic, uh, academic among other issues happening there. That wasn't just like a transfer for the sake of transferring. Um, come on, what's his? Uh, allegedly, Gangland, allegedly. Noah Spence. Thank you, Gangland. Yes, that's right. So I think I think Noah Spence is a good answer. Um, I think Noah Spence is a good answer, but there were non-football reasons for that. 
Yeah. Who was the five-star quarterback from Florida? None that committed. Um, yeah, none that committed. You're thinking of the guy who ended up playing a lot for Florida. Um, shoot, what's his name? Under Urban? No, not him. Five-star quarterback from Florida. That we, we've never... Something Gibson. I don't think he committed, though, did he? The only, like, he played in a Torrance spring Gibson. game? Torrance Gibson. Oh, no, he went to Oregon. I, I know you're talking about Torrance Gibson. He went to Oregon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? I'm not crazy. He went to Oregon, right? He, let me, let me look here. He signed out of Ohio State. He transferred to Cincinnati. Oh, to Cincinnati. Did he, did he go then from Cincinnati to Oregon? I swear he went to Oregon. Nope. I'm crazy. Okay. I'm, I'm just crazy. Am I thinking of someone else? I might be thinking of someone else. He just didn't pan out. He went from Cincinnati. After Cincinnati, he went to Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College. Oh boy. He went, he went, he went Juco after, uh, as, <laughs> but there was some off field stuff there. If you go from Ohio state to Cincinnati to Juco, there is stuff happening there. Uh, I don't know what the stuff is and I'm not going to speculate because it's none of my business. Oh yeah. Okay. That rings a bell, but we aren't going to talk about that. Um, Last question. How many new enrollees do you expect to hit the portal and become? I don't know. Uh, it's d dudes are in high school and then they come to college and they either figure out that they aren't as good as they thought they were, that Ohio State figures out that they weren't as good as they thought that they were. Um, sometimes guys just, I mean, just as humans forget as a college football player, some people have a hard time leaving their home and going to college. That's a hard transition for a lot of people. Even if you're not a football player, that's just a hard transition for a lot of people. Uh, so it's it just is what it is, man. Like you, you never know. You just never know. Some of the most can't miss players ever miss. And there's a thousand factors. Half of them have nothing to do with football as to why that happens. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just truth of the matter, because sometimes it's very easy to forget that these are children. These are 17 year olds who are making the biggest decisions of their lives, who's trying to set up their life for the future and who are leaving home for the first time and who are going to college and not just going to college. Like most of us go to college, just going to college. And then it's just so tough. Good example of other factors. You can't control Avery Henry. Yeah. Avery Henry graduated from my high school, graduated from St. Clairsville. Um, he was quite frankly, always going to be a long shot as far as, you know, was he ever going to contribute for Ohio state? He comes from a very small high school. He played against not great competition, but he did all the things he needed to do to get an Ohio state scholarship, which showed a lot of grit, um, a lot of dedication. Then he gets to Columbus and he got diagnosed with cancer. And that sucks. And the good news is, is that like he kept his scholarship and he got medical treatment at Ohio State University as part of his enrollment, as a part of his. So like we can say that it sucks that he never got a chance to play football at Ohio State and it does. It absolutely does. But you know what? He got a he got a scholarship to Ohio State and free cancer treatment. And my God, is that worth a ton of money on both ends? Mm -hmm. So 
you know, it's it's both a terrible story and a good story. Um, all things considered, he didn't go into insane medical debt. He and his family didn't go into insane medical debt and he's getting a free education. And he, you know, only ended up practicing at Ohio State for a short time. And of course, he wanted to play for Ohio State. He, of course he did. He wanted to compete mm -hmm. and outperform his recruiting rankings and prove everyone wrong and all of that. But that's just not what ended up happening. But the cancer was always there. The cancer was always going to happen. And he got free treatment and a free education out of it. And all things considered, that's not too bad. Nope. All right, Kyle. Anything scared? No, that's the end of the show. We're way, way over. Um, I want you to put a word out there that we back up. We were never, we were never that far down. We were never that far down. All right, Kyle, that's the end of the show. Uh, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? No, I already, already mentioned at the top of the show here. So we'll just, we'll just end it here. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music uh, will be brought to you by Armor for Sleep. Armor for Sleep, I think, just released new music, if I'm not crazy. That's a vague memory I have that they may have released some new music. And if if that's true, if I'm right, I'm going to play that new music for you. And if not, I'm still going to play an awesome song for you. Um, so Armor for Sleep, uh, they're a Columbus band. Um, I'm going to call them emo core. I don't know if they like that label or not, but that's what I'm going to call it. And if you guys don't like that label, reach out to me and let me know. I, I'll, I'll change it when I play you again in the future and I'll call you whatever you want me to call you. Um, but uh, once again, this is Armor for Sleep. So with all that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, Armor for Sleep. <laughs>